Coming up on today's show, we're going to check out the Browns' second day of organized team activities. We got some nice takeaways. We got our first, first look at Zadarius Smith. We'll talk about attendance, who was there, who was not there. Plus, we got some uh, nice quotes from the players speaking to the media. So a lot to cover on today's show. But let's get some ground rules out there first and foremost. One, these are optional practices. Now, I know that OTAs always brings a certain uh, level of frustration from fans when star players are not there. And I sort of somewhat share that frustration because I grew up in a household where optional means mandatory. Like, yes, you don't have to go, but you should go. But these are non-contact drills. It is May. There are no Super Bowls won in May. It's basically non-padded highlights. Like, everyone is just starved for football content, and we get these 20-second clips on Twitter of Deshaun Watson throwing an out route to Cedric Tillman, and we're like, boom, these guys are going to the Super Bowl already. So it's way too early to come away with concrete, hardcore takeaways in terms of what this is going to mean for the regular season, but it's our first glimpse of the 2023 Cleveland Browns team. Now, some information on the off-season workouts the Browns have in store for them. OTAs are running right now, May 23rd to the 25th. Then a brief break, and they'll pick back up again at the start of June. Mandatory minicamp is in June from the 6th to the 8th. And remember, the Browns are going to Greenbrier in West Virginia. So they're going to start training camp a bit earlier this year because they play in the Hall of Fame game. So less OTAs for Cleveland in 2023. Now, as for media availability, it's going to be available at half of the OTA session. So we'll get some glimpses. We'll get some audio. We'll get some interviews and sound bites and whatnot. But we're not going to see every single day of practice. Now, let's run through the attendance here. Not present. These are the guys that I saw on Twitter. Not officially official. Miles Garrett, Nick Chubb, Joel Petonio, David Njoku, all not there. I understand in an ideal world, sure, all 90 players are there, but OTAs are really installing offenses and defenses, which you got a new DC, so it'd be nice for some of these guys to be there for the new wrinkles coming in, but it's mostly for rookies and just first-year players on the team, right, so they can get to know the facility, the coaches, and just what it's like to play for the Cleveland Browns, for veterans who have been there for a long time, like all of these guys, there's not a whole lot of new information, so they want to train separately. I'm really not going to throw a hissy fit over it. Uh, we had some players that were there, but we're not practicing. We're on the sidelines, maybe doing individual drills or just not practicing altogether. Amari Cooper, remember, he got core muscle surgery, so not surprised, along with a lot of other players, right? Walker, Taki Taki, Phillips, all coming off IR ending seasons. Isaiah McGuire, that's a bit peculiar, right? Does the rookie have an injury that we're going to learn about? I'm not quite sure why he was not practicing because all rookies should be going through OTAs. Grant Delpit, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Dawson Deaton, remember he tore his ACL last year in training camp. Anthony Schwartz, he should be getting every single rep possible. And Isaiah Weston also coming off an ACL injury. Maybe some of these other guys have injuries we don't know about, but those players were not practicing an unconfirmed total of guys on the side working out individually. Now, today's pinned comment, before we start getting into the meat and potatoes of the OTA's takeaways I got for you all, do you care about attendance? Like, is this the kind of stuff that ticks you off? Or to you, does it not matter whatsoever, whatsoever whether or not Miles Garrett is present or not? Let me know what your thoughts are down below. If YouTube sticks an ad break when I'm done talking, Give me a Y for yes or N for no at the pinned comment. Would I prefer that Miles Garrett and Nick Chubb and Batonio and Ajoku are there? Yes. If I had a button that said, those guys go to OTAs or those guys don't go to OTAs, I'm going to click the button that says they go to OTAs. Will it matter in September? No. Like, do not let anyone fool you into if the Browns were to get off to a slow start. Man, they sure could have used Miles Garrett at OTAs. That is just not the case whatsoever. These guys do lots of team bonding sessions outside of OTAs. You got mandatory minicamp in two weeks. There is a lot of things in the schedule. Sure, I think not from a uh, practice standpoint. I don't think Miles Garrett's getting better by being at OTAs. 
but he's getting to know Zadarius Smith, right? He's getting to know Dalvin Tomlinson. So from a camaraderie and locker point locker room standpoint, I'd like to see them there. And let's be honest, this Browns locker room has not been concrete the last couple of years, but this is not going to keep me up at night. Now, let's uh, let's get into some takeaways we have here. Getting started with Zadarius Smith, our first look at the new edge rusher for the Browns. He was rocking his new number 99 jersey. That's what he's going to be wearing this year. And after the OTA practices, they had a media session, and he spoke along with numerous other first-year Cleveland Browns players, and he talked about how excited he is to get in a 4-3 front, which he had not been in in Minnesota or in Green Bay, and he talked about how he can't wait to put his hand back in the ground and just be unleashed. Um, overall, Zadarius Smith was just a super fun guy to listen to. Kevin Stefanski says a ball of energy, and you got that sense. Like He is going to be a fan favorite, in my opinion. Uh, him and Miles Garrett were talking about getting some defensive line or a name for the defensive line, the defensive room. So it'll be interesting to see what name they came up with. I try to think of one, but believe it or not, it's not easy to come up with an iconic name like the Splash Bros or Monsters of the Midway or Purple People Eaters right off the bat. Now, what's interesting was that they did ask him about the dynamic duo, the him and Miles Garrett form, and how that sort of stacks up across the NFL. So I just wanted to present some numbers to you guys. I'll let you come to your own conclusions. But in the AFC North, you have two great sets of pass rushers in Miles Garrett and now Sidarius Smith versus TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith. And I understand Watt missed some time last year, so these numbers aren't completely telling. But yeah. I mean, you're not crazy for saying the Browns have the best edge rush duo in the AFC North with Miles Garrett and really anyone, but to Darius Smith, for the first time, Miles Garrett might have another double-digit sack player opposite of him. I can't wait to see that unfold. Now, I think something that's being slept on is it's not just about the Darius Smith acquisition. Like, that's good at all. That's great. But you also add in a rotation of Okoronko and... For shits and giggles, Isaiah uh, McGuire and even Alex Wright, plus Jim Schwartz as the defensive coordinator who is known for just letting his defensive linemen get after the quarterback and asking questions later, as Darius Smith put it. like These guys are going to flourish under Jim Schwartz, and you've got the nice rotation going of Oboe because, believe it or not, when Week 11, Week 12 rolls around, these big guys up front for the offensive line, they can get a bit tired. So for them to be facing a defensive end in the fourth quarter who's got fresh legs because they are constantly rotating on early downs and, heck, even Darius Smith gets pushed in on ab obvious passing situations. So you get Dalvin Tomlinson, Smith, Oboe, and Garrett all on the field at the same time for a third and 12. The offensive line, they are going to be puking up on the sideline from going against all these fresh legs constantly. So Zadarius Smith is a very good acquisition, but if you want to sound smart at the bar when you're talking about the Browns' defense, Jim Schwartz and Oboe providing fresh legs and just the overall mastermind of Jim Schwartz, that is going to be deadly as well. Now, speaking of Jim Schwartz, we got our first kind of Look at him on the practice field. Uh, we had that during, I guess, rookie minicamp. Uh, but he was rocking the number 51 jersey. Juan Thornhill, after the practice, was asked, hey, why was Schwartz wearing that? And he said that Schwartz brought in a, didn't actually specify who, uh, but brought in a speaker to the defense, and he wore number 51 to honor him. So not for Mac Wilson. And if you don't recognize him from the back, Next to Jim Schwartz is Dequell Jackson. Now, I'm not quite sure if he's going to have a coaching role this season or if he's just there as a consultant right now, but it's good to see an awesome Browns linebacker back in Berea hanging out on the defensive side, helping this unit improve after last year. Now, speaking of improving from last year, Perrion Winfrey was in attendance for these optional workouts, and that was a big must-see for him, right? He's currently in the legal limbo, if you will, following his assault charges from April. Uh, and as far as 30-second Twitter clips go, he looked good getting off the ball. But then again, that's like the nature of OTAs. Everyone looks good, okay? The only thing you don't want to look is bad, right? It's really easy to look good in non-padded practices when a whistle is blown and you just run straight five yards. But the last thing you want is clips going of, out of you out of shape or dropping passes or anything like that. So super easy to look good in OTAs. And we all run with it and take a mile with it, but you just don't want to look bad. 
Winfrey last season. Here are his stats. 22 tackles, one tackle for loss, a half sack. So there is a lot of room for improvement for Perrion Winfrey. And the Browns are hoping he can take a big step forward in 2023. Now, when we look at Cleveland's defensive line, which we have to come up with a name for uh, because that's what Garrett and Smith are workshopping, you've got Dalvin Tomlinson. And you've got Siaka Ika, who may very well be a week one starter. Uh, I, I'm not going to pencil really many day two rookies into the starting lineup in May. But you've got a training camp battle like last year at the defensive tackle spot. Because after Dalvin Tomlinson and Siaki Ika, there is no guaranteed lock to make this roster. So the camp battle to watch for right now is between Jordan Elliott, Tommy Togiai, Maurice Hurst, uh, Tristan Hill. A lot of offseason acquisitions at the defensive tackle spot because I think Barry just wants to bring in a boatload of run-stopping DTs because that was the biggest need for this team in the offseason and hoping four of them stick. And whichever four of those are, great. But I can guarantee you Tomlinson and Ika are going to make this roster. I would say Winfrey if it was not for the legal matter. That's the only thing that's making me a bit hesitant just in case new details emerge and the Browns decide, hey, we just can't proceed with you. We've already got so much bad publicity after Deshaun Watson last year. We can't be known as a team that harbors men who have uh, legal situations against women. So for that reason, I'm a little hesitant on Perrion Winfrey. Otherwise, he would be a lock too. But Elliott, Togiai, Hurst, Hill, all those players are going to be battling for the next defensive tackle position. Now, before we get to the rest of the takeaways, I've got sponsor alert. Yeah, BetUS is back, baby, and they've got a great deal for the Dog Pound. As always, the 125% deposit bonus is here, but it won't last forever. So go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code BROWNS125, and our sportsbook partner, BetUS, will give you a 125% deposit bonus. So you got to use that link along with the promo code. And when you do, you can turn $100 into 225 You can put it on, uh, say, Roley's Heat right now. Are they going to close out? We'll talk to Roley later. He's a bit pessimistic after game four. So whatever picks you got, make them over at BetUS. Our next uh, takeaway I want to zero in on is Cedric Tillman. So did not get to see a whole lot of him today. But by all accounts, he has looked the part of an NFL wide receiver during OTAs. What does that mean in English? The viral Twitter clips of Deshaun Watson throwing to Cedric Tillman are off-season football porn, right? It's the only thing we have to latch on to right now, and we are all just dying and itching to get back to football. So when we get these out-route little clips and the players don't drop an easy pass and there's no DBs in the area, we look at that and go, boom, that's an offensive rookie of the year right there. Now, he was the number 74 pick in the draft for Cleveland, and he is battling to move up the wide receiver depth chart. I've seen this uh, conversation play out on Twitter a bunch, and so I wanted to bring it to this forum here. Because when you look at Cleveland's wide receiver room, Cooper's your wide receiver one. After that, things are up for grabs, right? I don't think anyone can definitively say, whether it's DPJ or Elijah Moore, who the true wide receiver two is and whether or not Moore is going to be just a slot guy or if they're going to move him to wide receiver too and have him play outside a little bit. But if I had to come up with a hot scolding take in May right now, scalding, whatever, I think Cedric Tillman will finish, the, will finish third in receiving for the Browns in 2023. And when the season is over, we're going to look at Cedric Tillman and go, that's our wide receiver one slash two in 2024 because Amari Cooper with a big cap hit at the, in the following season, his time may be dwindling in Cleveland after two seasons. So I think Cedric Tillman is going to be a fan favorite. He's going to really have an impressive rookie season, and he's going to be a big contributor, which unfortunately previous third round wide receivers, I'm not going to name them, but they can't say they've had a tremendous amount of impact in their rookie year. I don't think that trend continues for Tillman. He's going to be a stud for the Browns right out the gate. Now, some other takeaways I've got for you guys here. Demetri Felton was working out with the running backs. That should be no surprise, right? Cleveland is still kind of looking for that RB2. It's looking like it's Jerome Ford, but it's not absolutely locked up. So Felton is hanging out with the running backs because the wide receiver room is loaded anyway. Zadarius Smith, like I said earlier, just listening to him talk to the media, so much energy, so fun to listen to, very articulate. 
uh, intelligent guy, and I just think he's going to be a fan favorite. I just think fans are going to latch on to Darius Smith. He's going to play off fans. He's going to give you a lot to uh, you know, soak in and enjoy. So Smith is a early fan favorite contention right now. And Elijah Moore spoke to the media as well, and he talked about Deshaun Watson and how Watson loves football, right? And I know another wide receiver who's looking for a quarterback who loves football, but he talked about in Puerto Rico how the guys were hanging out in the villa or whatever. And Deshaun Watson, he's studying the playbook. They're on the beach, and they're finishing a workout, and they're ready to go back. What's Deshaun Watson doing? Studying the playbook. That type of leadership, it's infectious, right? It's contagious. Other guys then go, well, if Watson's studying the playbook, I don't want to look like a schmo, right? I got to study the playbook too. And it just carries and builds off of that energy. So good to see that. Good to hear that type of stuff all together. All the newcomers sounded very good in their media interviews. Juan Thornhill, he sounded super excited. And he kind of gives me John Johnson, not play style vibes, but off the field vibes where he's going to be online. He's going to talk to fans. He's going to go back and forth and, uh, He's going to be one of us. He's going to be very passionate, and he's going to be a part of the dog pound. I loved what I heard from Juan Thornhill. Now, if you enjoyed today's show, consider subscribing to the channel if you have not already. We get you guys Cleveland Browns YouTube content all off-season long. And listen, dog days of the off-season are just in front of us, and some other places might take their foot off the gas, but not here at the Browns Report. So subscribe for the best Browns content. Plus, we end every episode... With pick a car time, it's the off season, baby. So uh, we've done it three, four straight episodes now. No one's gotten it correct, at least in the walls of chat sports. Let's bring on producer Roly. Uh, Roly, what do you want to go with? I am going to go with the two of diamonds. Two of diamonds, okay. For all of you watching at home, play along. You can uh, type which card you're picking down in the comment section. I love this. Um, you want two of diamonds? I'm mm -hmm. going to go with king of hearts. King of Hearts. All right, give one more shuffle. Ooh, King of Hearts. I don't hate that. You ready? I don't hate that. Here we go. Nine of Clubs. Nine oh. of Clubs. Did anyone get it? Nine of Clubs. Okay. What so, a stupid card. Nine of Clubs. That's it. Appreciate everyone for tuning in. We're going to sign off. We're going to see everyone later. I'm feeling pretty close post Wisdom Teeth. I still feel like I slur some of my words. So for all the new viewers out there, I don't usually sound like this. But hey, hopefully we're back to 100% soon. We'll see everyone later, though.